welcome to my weekly uh, floral painting demo that I'm doing right now. Um, in this season, I thought it would be nice to just do a, a free little class um, once a week. So I've been really focusing on these floral paintings and have a new one today that I'm going to start layering some colors into. Um, hi, Kim. Thanks for joining me. All right, so with this one, I had some really beautiful pictures um, that someone sent me of flowers from their garden. Um, my friend Heather sent these to me, and I was trying to decide between a couple of them, so I asked you guys to help me pick, and so we did a vote, and this was the winner. Um, but I have a feeling I'm probably still going to end up painting that other one because it was, it was a really pretty picture, too. Um, but this is the one that we're going to use for today. Um, so, little tip, um, before I start painting my, uh, from a reference image, I always do some editing to it. Um, and if you're one of my students, uh, if you've taken a live class or an online workshop, you know that um, my favorite filter to use is in the app PixArt, um, and it's the Geo filter. So I use that one quite a bit. Um, but, <clears throat> excuse me, um, but there are a few other apps that I use to tweak this one too. Um, they're a little more complicated, so we don't need to go into it. Um, all right. Hi, Bridget. And you're going to paint with me. Awesome. So I shared this photo earlier today and I shared a little sneak peek of how I, um, prepared my underpainting because I know several of you were interested in kind of painting along with me. And I think that's great. Uh, so I wanted you to um, see where I was going to start. I always do the underpainting first before I do my lives because this is really the fun part where it starts to come alive with the actual color. So um, just real quick, I'm going to talk about what I did in the underpainting because I know there's always a lot of questions about that. Um, I like to do a complementary color underpainting, but I don't always do the exact complement. Um, I typically do warmer colors. Um, but where I'm calling these um, blossoms, I'm going to call them like a peach tone. And so my opposite is going to be purple. And in the areas that are kind of gray and blue, I did um, a combination. I made this burnt orange with alizarin crimson and Hansa yellow. Um, and then the rest of it, I chose to do uh, magenta for an underpainting. And the reason is, is I have this one bright red flower up at the top here. And it, to me, I feel like I need to tie in that color somewhere else. So I thought it would be nice to balance this bright red with some pinks and reds poking through um, towards the bottom. So that was the reason why I did the magenta in the background. Um, plus this quinacridone magenta, guys, is like my absolute favorite color by Golden. Um, is you just can't get this color. There's no way to mix this color without buying this color. So I highly recommend if you're going to get a few awesome colors from Golden, this is one to invest in. All right, so let's get started. Oh, but you know what, guys? I do not have my water cup. Hold on, I'll be right back. Forgot to get my water. I have my water I'm drinking out of, but I don't think I should put my paintbrush in there, although it definitely has happened. So hang tight for just a minute. because I think it'll be nice just to start pulling that out. So I'm going to mix up a highlight color. Um, awesome, Holly, you're gonna paint with me. Awesome, awesome. Um, I don't know if you got my message about the magenta. It was probably too late. I just saw your, your message about that. Holly was wondering how I got that color. And as I was saying, you cannot mix that color. You just have to use the paint, um, the quinacridone. So I'm going to use white. And I'm going to use a little bit of pyrrole red light 
which is a very warm red. I use it quite a bit in skin tones. Um, it makes a really nice peach. So I'm going to put a little bit of that and just a speck of yellow in there. I'm gonna thin it with a little bit of glaze. And I'm going to make this a little bit more on the peach side because as I layer up my colors, I'll bring in more white and lighten it up even further. But I'm just going to start with it being a little bit more on the peach side. Um, Jenna, yes, there will be a replay available. So I do these as a live and it's great if you can catch me while I am painting because then you can ask questions, but otherwise I always post it afterwards so you can go back and reference it too. All right, so I'm just going to start pulling out some of my highlights and the flower on the right side is much warmer. It's got more of those peach tones. The one on the left is a little bit on the cooler side. So I'm going to start with this warmer tone over on the right. And I talk about this often, but I think it's always good to bring it up over and over that um, you really have to be careful not to cover up all the purple in these early stages. So I like to do this underpainting um, and I really like to let it show. And if you cover up too much purple in the beginning, it's just gone. You can't get it back. So you really have to be careful in the beginning to not cover up too much. Um, Rachel's asking, how much glaze? You know, it really varies. Um, so I tend to use more glaze in my early stages of the painting. And then as I go into brighter layers, I use less glaze because then I want the color to really stand out more. Um, but towards the beginning, I use more glaze. So always kind of think thinner paint, building your way up to thicker paint. Now there are a lot of folds and petals in this one. And I'm going to be pretty careful not to get carried away with trying to include every little bit because it's like impossible. And I feel like it takes away from the painting. Um, if you do too many of the folds, you just kind of want to get the general feel of the flower. But if you start counting, you know, there's 42 folds in this flower and I've got 43, I mean, it's just going to make you insane. And um, it's just nobody's going to see the reference image. They're not going to know. So you're just trying to find the essence of the flower um, and the direction of the folds versus making sure that everyone is in the exact same place. Um, and that's probably true for a lot of different types of painting. That, that goes true with uh, painting leaves or hair. You really don't need to make sure you have exactly the same amount. Um, just kind of getting the overall feel. I always kind of say that if your, your lightest lights and your darkest darks are in the same places, um, then everything else doesn't really matter um, because it's going to feel accurate if you've got those things correct. All that middle stuff can kind of just go nuts and do whatever. And that's like where I like to play around with um, using different colors. It's kind of in that, those in between tones in the middle stages. That's where I get a little more adventurous. And if you are just joining me, if this is your first live demo with me, just want to say thank you for jumping in and watching me paint today. I really appreciate it. Um, I've been doing these ever since basically quarantine started at my house. I moved my studio home um, and I'm just painting away in my bedroom. <laughs> um, but 
there's been some benefits. It's been kind of nice having everything here and accessible where I don't have to go into the studio and get all set up every time. It's just always here. So I feel like I've even been painting a little bit more because it's right there. Um, uh, Rachel's asking about the ratio of paint to glaze. It's, it's probably mostly paint, I would say. I just kind of dipped into the glaze at the end. There's really not an exact recipe. It's really just a matter of kind of feeling um, to see if you want it more transparent or not. And a lot of times I might mix up a color and place it on my palette or place it in my painting and decide it's not right. And so then I just go in and adjust it. So sometimes you just have to kind of mix it up, get a feel for it, test it out and then adjust it as you go. Um, so I can't say it's an exact recipe or ratio. I know that that drives a lot of my faux finisher friends crazy when they come take my classes and they're so used to having like exact kind of recipes of different products and I'm just kind of like, oh, feel, feel what you need. <laughs> All right, I'm putting a little bit more red and yellow into it because I want to make it a little more orange. Um, Jenna, this is not heavy bodied golden. Um, I like golden fluid acrylics because um, I tend to paint in thinner layers um, and that, so I don't really build up that um, texture. But some people love the heavy body. So um, I've actually kind of thought maybe I should play around and try it out a little bit because I've been so loyal to using the fluid acrylics and maybe I should just kind of test the waters with it. But all of the golden paints are amazing because the pigment is super strong and rich and beautiful. So if you like a little more texture, um, you know, try out the heavy body ones, but I'm using fluid acrylics. So I'm just putting in a few little windows where I've got some brighter oranges there. about all I'm going to add in right now. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave the rest with purples. So um, now I'm going to go in and pull out some even brighter highlights in this one. So I'm going to make a color that's going to be a notch brighter than that first layer that I did. So I'm still using white, enhance the yellow, and the pyrrole red light. But I'm just gonna dump a lot more white into it to lighten this up. Um, and now I talked about how as I go into the brighter tones, I go a little bit more opaque. So now I'm not even putting any glaze in there. I'm just making this color um, more opaque so that it'll really stand out. Yeah, Gemma, you gotta try the golden, trust me. Um, and there are, I should really, I know I've been telling you guys, I'm going to share my color choices. I really need to do that because there's certain paints that I always use over and over again. Um, okay, somebody remind me of that. All right, so now I'm going to look for these brightest highlights and I'm just going to drop them in there and you'll see how it'll really jump out. And we're even going to go brighter than this towards the end, but for right now, I'm just going to drop these bright tones in. I also, uh, you'll notice I'm not doing any blending. Um, I know that's something that's tricky to not do because <laughs> everybody wants to just like make the each layer fit with the previous layers, but I actually just let the layers stand on their own. So I, and then that's why I like paint that dries pretty quick because I'm just building over what I've put down not trying to work it into what I've done. Um, 
another good tip if you want to try to do these layers with no blending is I really like a square tip brush. Um, if you have a different type of brush, it's harder to layer the color down without kind of scrubbing it in. So I'm a big fan of the square tipped brushes. So if you ever get to a place when you're painting something and you're just like lost, you can't figure out what, what is what, I always recommend, um, like in my live workshops, when, when students are kind of in that place, I always say just like stop working on that section and move somewhere else because sometimes once you get um, some other kind of context clues in place, all of a sudden it, the petals start to make sense again. So that's another reason why I like to just kind of bounce all over the place. Um, and I know right now I'm kind of sticking with this flower, but I am gonna jump over to this one pretty quick. Um, but yeah, I do a lot of jumping around. I never build up just one area too much because first of all, I don't wanna overwork it. And if you jump around, that helps you to not do that. Um, but also the way I paint one thing will sometimes be impacted by the way that I would paint something else. All right, so that being said, I'm gonna take a break from this one. I'm gonna hop over to this one. Now, as I mentioned, these colors are not as warm, so I'm going to change up my recipe just a little bit. Um, so as far as brushes, um, so I really like these um, brushes by Royal Langnickel. Um, and I sometimes use the white, sometimes I use the golden hair. Um, this one is uh, the Fine Touch by Hobby Lobby. These are pretty good too. Um, neither one is expensive brush, they're actually really cheap. And so what I do is I just use a brush for a while and then I throw it away and I get a new one. And I feel like that's really the best rather than buying expensive brushes. Um, okay, so now when I mix up my white with this one, I'm going to use a little bit of alizarin crimson, which is cooler. It's more of like a burgundy. I'm going to use some of that. Um, and trying to decide if I'm going to put any yellow in. I'm gonna just going to put a tiny speck of yellow in. And then I'm going to drop a little glaze in there because this is the first layer. Um, Letitia, yes, my reference image is edited. Um, you might not have been with us when I mentioned that, but yeah, I, um, I use the app called PixArt and I love the geode filter, but I also did a few other things to this one as well. But the geode filter kind of simplifies the forms a little bit, um, just makes it a little easier to see the shapes. Okay, so I'm not totally sure if I'm gonna go with this color, but I'm gonna try and see how it looks. So this color is just um, alizarin crimson white and a tiny speck of yellow. Well, that might work. All right. I'm just starting to find the highlights. And you really want to think about the fact that the highlights don't fall in the same place on every petal. Um, sometimes it's easy to kind of get carried away and fall into this pattern where you're putting like you're putting a highlight on every petal and you're kind of making it the same shape um, and that's just not the way that the light falls so you really just have to go pretty tight off of your reference image um, looking at the shapes of the highlights and where they fall. Nope, I went into the wrong color there. Okay. 
So I'm going to do this um, floral demo again next week, Monday at five, but I think that next week might be my last one for a little while of the flowers because I am really just itching to do some portrait painting. So I have a feeling that after next week, I'm gonna switch over and start doing some portraits um, for these demos. So that will be fun. Um, and if you're new, if you just discovered my floral demos um, and you really want to see some, you can definitely go back and see the other ones. I think I've done at least five of them um, through the weeks. So you can go back and check those out. And since this flower is darker, it's a little bit more in shadow, this one's got the brighter highlights. When I layered in my wash of purple, um, I put the purple a little bit darker on this side. So when I'm layering in my underpainting, I am thinking about where the shadows are and how to represent them even in those early stages of the underpainting. Because it makes it easier for me if my base color is a little closer to where I'm trying to go than if I made everything the same depth of purple. Um, because if I did, I'd have to build some areas up quite a bit more. You are welcome, Jackie. Yeah, I thought it was nice to start showing the reference photo. I know the first couple of them I did not, and I can see where it makes the, the demo um, a lot more valuable if you can see what I'm seeing. So I'm sorry that it's kind of small. Um, for some reason with Facebook Live, you have to have your, for, your video vertical to do these lives. I think the only way you can do it horizontal is if you're filming with like a PC, but I'm, I have this little mount on, on an arm that I use when I film over my easel, and so I'm just filming with my phone. So it has to be vertical, but it makes it kind of skinny to try to squeeze everything in here. So you have to bear with me there, but I hope it's working out okay for everybody. So just starting to find these forms. Kind of stepping back, getting away from it, squinting to compare it to my reference image. Um, that always helps to try to decide if you're getting close and it's starting to represent what you're going for. Um, Jenna, I get these 8x8 eight eight, um, wood panels from Hobby Lobby, um, and they're nice. They go half off, like, all the time, so an 8x8, eight eight, this size is normally $8, and I always just stock up whenever they're $4, so it's, it's nice because it's not a very big investment, and then you're not afraid to experiment with them, try some new things, and not worry if you don't like it, um, or you can always paint over it. <laughs> All right, I think, actually there's a petal here on this flower that's a little bit cooler, and so I'm going to use some of my cooler recipe here. I'm gonna drop just a little more alizarin crimson in there, and I put a little more glaze in there to thin it out, and I'm gonna put some of that on this petal. And maybe a little bit up here too. All right, 
Now I'm going to go in and drop the um, brighter highlights on this one. Hi, Nina. Hi, Lindsay, Julie. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by today. Um, okay, now I'm putting more white into that mixture that I had with the alizarin crimson and the Hansi yellow. And as I mentioned before, um, when I'm layering into the brighter tones, I'm going to go more opaque, so I'm not putting any glaze in there. And these bright highlights will only be on the top and a little bit there. There won't be any on the lower left side. That's all in shadow. So I'm just looking for those very brightest areas. And I'm still not straight white, although um, towards the end I might go back with some straight white and just pull out the very brightest tones. But I leave that for the end. Like I said before, if you put your brightest brights and your darkest darks in the correct places, everything else just kind of comes together. Put a little bit of yellow in there to warm it up a pinch. For my yellow, I like Hansa Yellow Opaque because it's a really strong yellow and sometimes it can be hard to get yellow to pack much punch because it's kind of a transparent color. So that's why I like um, Golden Paint, their Hansa Yellow Opaque. It's a really nice color. Be enough highlights on there for now anyways I'll come back and add a little bit more later but I think it's time to move on and jump somewhere else Take a drink of water okay um, I think I'm going to block out the surface that this is on. I guess it's on like a wood little bench or something. I'm going to switch to a bigger brush because I was using a number two, which is pretty small. Um, and so I'm going to switch to a number three. And um, you want to be able to just kind of do it in a couple of strokes. You don't want a bunch of little hashes. So that's why I'm going to a bigger um, brush. Wendy's asking about sharing the sketch. Um, something like that might be coming, Wendy. Um, I, I'm going to just kind of say stay tuned for that for right now. Um, I did share the reference image um, and I shared a photo of what my underpainting looked like for this one. Um, but there are some exciting things happening with Facebook Live um, that might allow me to turn it into a little bit more of a class. So um, I'm hoping I can share more about that soon. All right, so I'm going to do this blue. Um, it's really a gray, but I'm gonna make it more blue. And so I've got white and I just put a little bit of Payne's Gray in there. Payne's Gray is a really nice navy blue. Um, so I put just a little bit of that in. Um, and I think I'm gonna add a tiny speck of phthalo blue, a very, very tiny speck because phthalo blue is crazy strong. But the Payne's Gray alone was a little too purple and I want it to be a little bit more of an aqua blue. So just drop a little bit of that in there. I'm gonna put a little bit of glaze. And now I'll try putting some of my highlights in there. Thank you, Sharon. Um, all right, here we go. And I'm definitely going to leave some of my awesome magenta poking through. I'd be so, so careful not to 
put too much color on because I love that magenta. Almost kind of dry brushing this as I do it because I kind of want my paintbrush to just skip over that magenta a little bit and that also kind of adds to the wood effect if it kind of jumps a little. Now we've got the, um, what is it called, the distortion in the vase. So um, that surface is kind of bowing up to show us the shape of the vase. So I'm just lightly dropping a little color in there. Okay, that's about all I need right there. Um, yeah, now I see a highlight at the top of this piece of wood up at the top. It's a little bit darker than what I've got here, so I'm going to just put a little bit of Lizard and Crimson into my color and a tiny bit more of that phthalo blue. Oh, that was too much. Um, just to darken it a pinch. With these gray tones, it's it's really okay um, to just kind of let it go whatever direction you want to. Um, it doesn't have to be just the right gray, but generally grays kind of go towards the, either blue or brown. Um, Rachel is asking about my color recipes. Um, yeah, I did mention that I should do like just a, maybe a some sort of quick tutorial just on favorite color recipes. So maybe not necessarily um, teaching how to paint something, but maybe I could just do something where I'm like mixing colors for you and talking about how to mix them. Because I, I think maybe that's something, if you're new to painting, that would definitely be helpful. Um, okay, so we got that piece of wood. Now I think I'll darken it, make a darker gray, and just wash in that darker color. So I'm going to put some Payne's Gray in there and a little more Alizarin and Crimson. So Payne's Gray and Alizarin and Crimson are like two of my go-to gray tones because they make a nice kind of dirty purple. Um, so I do that a lot mixed with white. Now I want it to be a little bit more green, so I'm going to put a little yellow in there. Maybe a little bit of phthalo green. You use a lot of colors to make gray. <laughs> and there's a lot of different ways to make the same gray. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit more blue in there. All right, this might be about what I need. Now I'm gonna put a little glaze in and go over here. Okay, now I'm gonna put this on top of my underpainting. And so I'm letting some of those dark red tones peek through. So you can see this is definitely more transparent because this is not a highlight that I'm really trying to have stand out. This is a darker tone. And I like to leave kind of a halo of the underpainting around my forms. So as you wrap around the flowers, that's a good place to leave little bits of that orangey red poking through. All right, now while I've got this gray color on my brush, I'm, I see some gray behind this flower, so I'm just gonna drop that in there on top of the uh, magenta. So these are kind of like grasses in the background. So there's gonna be a lot of different colors kind of floating around there. So I thought I'd just bring out a little bit of texture now. And if you really want a flower to pop, especially near the highlight, if you put a dark color behind it, it'll make that highlight pop out even brighter. Um, so Letitia, no, I'm not using water right now. I'm just thinning with glaze. Um, but I definitely did use water when I put in my underpainting. Um, but now at this point, I'm just using glaze. 
And actually, while I have this nice gray on my brush, I'm looking around to see where else do I see this gray. And I actually see it pretty dark in this, the shadows on this flower. So I'm going to go ahead and just put that in right away. So whenever I have a color on my brush, usually before I decide to switch to a new color, I just kind of pop around the painting and look to see if there's anywhere else I can drop that color in. It saves me time, but then it also helps to unify the painting when you see the same colors kind of um, bopping around. I'm going to lighten it a little bit and put in a few other cool gray shadows. So I just put a little more white in there. And one way to actually make flowers really pop even more, it sounds funny, but it's to put some of these duller tones in them. Because when you contrast these duller tones, like these cooler shadows and brown tones, um, when you contrast that with some really vivid highlights, um, it makes those highlights look brighter. Um, so that is a little trick that I do over and over again. If you really look closely, at a lot of my pieces, you see all, all these bright colors, but they're intertwined with quite a few duller tones. Um, and that allows them room to look brighter. I don't want to put this gray everywhere because I want to let my purple just work for some of my grays as well. Look at what Wi-Fi got. Oh, it looks like I'm still on. Hey guys, um, can someone tell me if you can see this? I just had a weird thing happen with my phone where it said it was super hot and it was, I don't know, doing something strange. So somebody give me a thumbs up if, if we're all good right now. Anybody, so sorry about this. I don't know what happened, but just real quick, give me a thumbs up. Yep, you can hear me? Okay, we're gonna carry on. I don't know what happened. My phone just um, just said that it was a temperature emergency and I had to cool down before I could keep going. I have no idea why, so I'm hoping my uh, phone doesn't blow up. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna keep going. If I lose you, I'm so sorry, everyone. Um, but I'm gonna try to finish this out. Okay, super. Okay, I really hope my phone doesn't blow up. <laughs> All right, give me one sec here. Okay. Has anyone else had that happen? It's strange. Okay, so you said it's blurry. Ugh, I don't know. I'm gonna carry on, guys. I'm not sure what the deal is, but we're gonna keep going. Um, and I just realized it is getting late, so I better hurry it up. Okay, I'm gonna drop some reds into this flower up at the top. So I'm going to use some cadmium red. And a little bit of magenta and some white. Oh, it's clearing up. Good. Oh, gosh, I hope my phone's not going to blow up. <laughs> That's scary. It's like we keep our whole life on our phone, right? Um, okay. Yeah, Holly, I've had that happen in the sun too. And I don't, it, it was weird. I have my phone in front of a light, but the light is not a hot light. So I'm, I'm thinking it had to be that. I moved the light back. Hopefully that's all it was. All right. So I'm gonna put these bright red highlights on this flower. And this flower is going to be a little bit tricky because it's got these like red and white stripes. So 
it's going to be a little tough to represent that without going into too much detail, but I'm going to give it a whirl. This is one of those times where I'm not going to worry about putting these colors in the exact same place. Um, okay, so now I think I need to put some little speckles of that white in, although that white is not going to be straight white because that would be way too dark. So I'm going to use alizarin crimson and white and a little bit of that um, phthalo blue. So it's my whites are actually going to be like a purple, but it'll look like they're white, even though they're not. Um, go a little cadmium red. Okay. Cause my whites are pretty dark over on this side. So I'm just gonna put some of those in, put my dark ones in. Oh, I have a dark red over here, some red there. Okay, now I'm gonna lighten up my whites. I'm gonna add a little more white in there. So I'm actually kind of shocked that this live didn't cut out with that weird thing with my phone. That's pretty surprising. I was kind of amazed when the phone turned back on and you were all still here waiting for me. Thank you. All right. Okay, just a little indication of some of these textures in here. I feel like this flower you could spend ages on trying to get all these little bits just right and that would just not be worth it, so. Not going to, okay. I'm gonna move somewhere else. I'm gonna put my background cover up, my whoopsie, my uh, pink, because that's a little distracting. So I'm gonna make kind of like a grayish tan tone. Um, we we'll use white. And some pyrrole red, it's gonna be kind of like a peach. Some yellow, and a little bit of Payne's gray, maybe to knock that down. And a little bit of alizarin crimson too. You can't see the painting, Joyce. Uh, I'm gonna tip it up a little bit, but you should be able to. I can see the painting right in the center. I'm not sure about that. All right, I'm gonna put some glaze in because I wanna allow my magenta to show. So this is just gonna be kind of a warm, tan color. I don't know how this is gonna look until I put it on, so I'm just gonna throw some in there. Yeah, that seems good. Okay. So in the background is definitely a good place to be loose, let plenty of underpainting show through. But also when you've got like a textured background like this, you wanna be careful not to make like all your textured lines perfect and going in the same direction. And then we've got some of this background color in the distortion in the vase. I always love painting water. It's so fun. It's hard sometimes to get like all the different highlights and distorted sections, but it's like when you get it, it's amazing. All 
I'm going to put some of these warmer tones on here too because I feel like that's a little too cool. So I like to just keep layering those colors. Okay, so now my shadows down here are actually blue, right? So I'm going to go back to my grayish color that I made. I'm going to put a little bit more phthalo blue in there. Oh, I have too much on my brush. So I'm going to make my gray more of a blue gray. And remember that phthalo is crazy strong. All right, put a little more glaze in there. Okay, so then I'm going to just put these shadows in. They're stretching out across. I'm going to drop some in up here, some up here. So when you've got your underpainting really solid and you really have all these different shapes mapped out really well, um, it makes it the rest of the painting go pretty quick because you know where everything is. You're not second guessing things. Um, so that's why I do the underpainting and find all those shadows. forgot to mention this last time, but um, thank you so much to everyone who has shared my Facebook Lives. Um, if you've enjoyed watching it, um, I would love for you to share this because um, the replay is still available for anyone to watch after the fact. Um, and it just really, really helps me um, for you to share it with people that you know might like watching some painting. So, uh, you know, this is a time when everyone's at home and looking for different ways to entertain ourselves, try new things. Um, and so I've had a lot more people start following my work and I really appreciate, um, that everyone has helped me that way. So thank you so much. Alright, so I'm just continuing with this grayed out blue, putting this into the shadows in my vase. Quite a bit of it here and I'm going to make it a little bit darker and put it into these posts in the background and over here as well. We'll just drop it in there. Make it go even a little bit darker. I'm going to put a little bit of Payne's Gray and a little bit more Alizarin Crimson in there. My standard dark color recipe just makes a really beautiful dark purple. So you guys have probably noticed I never ever use black. I feel like it's like a sin, <laughs> um, but I would just much rather use a really vivid, rich, dark tone than to use black. So I usually err on the side of purple rather than black. Okay, now I think we need to put some green in there. There's just a little subtle indication of green in the stems. Um, also, I should tell you if the stream, the live stream is a little bit blurry right now and you do want to um, check it out later, I've noticed that sometimes after I post it, if you watch it afterwards, um, it will be better. So, I unfortunately, it's just a streaming thing sometimes. It's probably because my kids are downstairs watching TV and using our Wi-Fi and we're doing a hundred things at once. I'm guessing that might have something to do with it. All right, so I just made green. I'm using Payne's Gray and some Hansa Yellow. Um, and put a little bit of Alizarin Crimson in there to knock it down. So it's a little bit of a dirtier green. I'll put that into the stems. I always 
tone my greens down because if you do your greens too intense, it just makes everything look kind of fake. So always tone your greens down with some red in there. All right, now I'm gonna lighten my green a little bit, add a little white, a little more yellow. And just put some highlights. And I think I'll put a little green in the background too. Just kind of give that some more indication of ground back there. Oh, and we do have a little leaf up here and up here. That's pretty dark up there. I need to put a little bit more Payne's Gray into it to darken my green. And that leaf is actually pretty bright. So I'm gonna make a new spot for a new green because this green I want to be brighter. So this is yellow, a little bit of Payne's Gray. No, that's actually not bad, just like that. Maybe I'll try that. Just put that bright green in there. Ooh, too bright. That's a little too bright. Uh, I need a little red. See, I wasn't listening to my own advice. I said always put red in with your greens and then I didn't and it was too bright. So there you go. And now I'm gonna put a little white in there too. And you know, I really only see that one bright leaf but I'm gonna make a bright leaf down here, I think. Maybe not quite as bright but I'm just gonna put it greenish yellow leaf down there because I want to balance that one out. And that's another thing is you get to be in control